Good evening, folks. It's Diamond with the Oppenheimer Ranch Project, bringing you a Grand Solar Minimum update Saturday, January 5th, 11 p.m. Mountain Time, 2019. GFS models show heavy snow hitting the northeast by January 10th, and the Mountain West to be pummeled starting now. And we'll show you how. Keep calm. It's boom time. Space weather showing up on the KP Index. Slight geomagnetic storm over the last 24 hours. Hours of powers. And that is causing amazing auroras. Yes, for your photographic delight. Heads up. Storm to drop 4 to 8 inches on Flagstaff. That's Arizona. Saturday night. 8 to 12 on the North Rim. 6 to 8 in Williams. 6 to 8 in Flagstaff. We're not with you. Show low, 1 to 2. Springerville, nothing. That's up. Yeah. Tsale. Wherever you say that. Near Chinle, 4 to 6. Camp Verde, you got the goose egg. Prescott, 1 to 2. Hoo hoo. Pacing less than 1. If you're in Chino, you're going to be measuring it in millimeters. Tons of snow in Zona. Yeah. Desert country. Why won't this close up? Let's get to it. Weekend storm expected to bring rain in mountain snow to San Diego. Willie! San Diego snow? Say it ain't snow. 39-39. That's chilly. A low pressure trough moving through Southern California is due to deliver rain and a chance of mountain snow to the San Diego area Saturday and Sunday, your fun day. The winter storm is expected to drop one quarter to a half inch of precipitation along the coast, across the inland valleys, up to an inch in the East Country Highlands, and one-tenth of an inch in the deserts. According to the National Weather Service, unsettled atmospheric systems are going to totally flux Willie's weekend. You have to deal with what I'm talking about. Winter storm on the way. Jenna Lakes forecast. Do we want to watch it? Nah. Lake and Cook counties. Now to the okay, south. we're doing west it. Of that, we have a winter storm watch. The winter storm warning goes into effect at 10 p.m. tomorrow, Sunday, and lasts until 2 p.m. on Monday. I'm expecting the most snow in that region along the North Shore. You'll see those totals in just a few seconds here. And for the winter storm watch, that starts at 8 p.m. tomorrow and goes until 10 a.m. on Monday. Now, before we get to the details on that snow, we're going to talk about highs from our weather watchers today. We were in the 30s pretty much area-wide above freezing in Embarrass as well as Big Falls, but right at freezing for Hibbing and Keewatin. Further to the east, we've got 37 in Silver Bay and Castle Danger, 29 in Brimson, 31 in Kenosha, 34 in Holyoke, 33 at the National Weather Service, 37 in Ashland, and 33 in Ironwood, 36 in Hayward as well as Gordon, and 35 she in She just Poplar. said in Embarrass. Expecting that again to for tomorrow, but things will change after That's that. A city. We have a system that moves in. I can't stand Looking that weather forecast. Right now, we're but we'll let her play in the background. Snow forecast tonight, Monday night, night will be to shut her up. A little bit into the team, Please. That we haven't seen. Thank you. Whew. Snow forecast Sunday through Monday a.m. 9 to 12 inches in Grand Marias. Grand Marias. Grand Marias. Well, however you say it up there. Ely, 6 to 9, Hibling, Duluth. Heads up, 3 to 6, cross a huge swath from Hayward up to Baudette. International Falls, you won't be spared. Big Fork, Grand Rapids, Brainerd, Atkin, Hinkley, Siren. Whew. That's a lot of snow. And we're not, that's not even a ho, ho, ho. Yo. But it is a boom. Sierra Resorts brace for several feet of new snow. A cold front bearing down on Northern California Friday had skiers scrambling to the Sierras where they were stuck in their cars and eating their power bars. It was expected to dump several feet of snow over the weekend, killing many millennials. Heavy traffic was reported on both Highway 80 and 50 as the exodus was on due to arrive in Lake Tahoe. While the roadways were still clear and dry, there were no chain requirements, but forecasters said it would not be the case earlier Saturday which would be your heavy snow fatter day. 
Holy sh! Last and peak, 48 to 60 inches predicted. Donner Pass, don't eat your neighbor, 30 inches predicted. Don't do it! 24 inches, Echo Pass, 30 inches in Cameron. Sonora, 30 inches. Tioga, 12. Holy macaroni. You're going to be inundated on Lassen. If the volcano blows, this snow will melt all five feet of it. <laughs> Winter weather advisory issued for the Sierra Nevada from Yosemite to Kings Canyon beginning Saturday morning, January 5th. Ow! Get it! Are you making me the pot pie? Yeah, chicken. Do it. I want it fire roasted. A winter weather advisory is in effect for the Sierra Nevada from Yosemite to Kings Canyon above 4,500 feet from 10 a.m. Pacific Standard Time Saturday through noon on Sunday for total snow accumulations of over your foot. Did you hear that, Al? <coughs> They're predicting a foot right up your... Hazardous winter-like conditions for campers and hikers and Al Gore likers. U.S. West Coast stormy siege with flooding rain, yellow shirts and black skirts, mudslides and yards of mountain snow to continue into midweek. A series of potent storms will slam much of the West Coast of the United States, bringing up to five feet of snow into Al Gore's hole. Drenching rain and heavy mountain snow, gusty winds and pounding surf through the middle of the next week. Greatest impacts, Portland and South, San Fran and North, Heads up, Fresno. It's a no-go. Significant rainfall, heavy mountain snowfall, strong winds will be your weekend. One storm will hit late Sunday into Sunday night, and another storm will roll ashore Tuesday night and last into Wednesday. Yes, the biggest and baddest of the bunch is likely to be the storm midweek. And that's going to bring heavy snows into the Sierras. Flash flooding, mountain snow, power outages, high surf, mudslides, landslides, all kinds of slides. Jerry Brown in his pants. Did he die yet? Sonoran crops damaged by cold and snowy weather. Really? You mean snow in Arizona is not normal? Ow! Ow! Get the pot. Put the pie down. Listen. Listen to what I'm saying now. And then bring me the pie. Produce growers in neighboring Sonora, Mexico are asking authorities to declare a state of emergency as snowfall and extreme cold weather damage thousands of crops throughout the state. Sonoran farmers are estimating that more than 30,000 acres of crops have already been damaged by frost in recent days. Though they say they are not done surveying the fields, they feel that Al Gore is full of shite and that they're totally fluxed. That's what they're saying. It's what they told me. And I don't have any water. Winter storm will bring snow, sleet, and rain to the area. Yeah, the area of the Northeast. The emergence of El Nino has resulted in a mild winter so far, bringing wetter conditions across the southern U.S., yeah, up to 10 feet of rain. I would say that's wetter. But we're looking for a mix from Toronto to New York and Boston North, mostly snow. <coughs> and that's a ho-ho. Here's your GFS model. Let's run it through. Let's pause it. Let's walk your Sierra nightmare right through. And there's a double pulse. So the first heavy snow will come through Monday, which will be your commute day. So if you're in the Four Corners region, you're going to have a hellish commute, Nevada. The Sierras get south. Most of Washington State, heavy snow in the southern mountains of Oregon. Southern mountains of Washington, Olympics. All of B.C., Northern Minnesota, Northern Michigan, North Dakota, and some light snow happening in the Northeast. Let's step it through Monday through your Tuesday. 
heavy snow to enter Michigan and Missouri. In Minnesota, not Missouri, it's Minnesota. And that's the Grand Marquise up here that's going to get the heavy brunt. As this storm pummels Quebec, the Eastern Maritimes and other areas, heavy snow will move into New York State, Vermont, New Hampshire. And there's a little southern system dipping down into the Alabama region that we'll keep an eye on. Take a look at here. Heavy snow in the Four Corners region. We're talking a relief of all drought happening before winter has just begun. So by mid-January, most of the droughts will be relieved throughout all of the entire western region, all the way down through the San Diego region, with some snows happening in Baja. And just look at these totals. Holy macaroni. Dry hole in the center. We call it weather. Some people call it global warming. Inclement weather continues in the west. Snow and ice possible in the upper Great Lakes region. Winter storm warnings and watches through 15 states from Montana down to Mexico. Say it ain't so. <coughs> it's true. Just east of San Diego, there are winter storm watches in the mountains of southwestern California near San Diego, San Diego the entire Sierras, all the way up through Oregon and Washington. Winter storm watches and warnings throughout Utah, Nevada, Utah, Idaho, Montana, Wyoming, Colorado, New Mexico, Arizona. Heads up. Winter storm watches and warnings taking place in northeast Minnesota and northern Wisconsin. St. H. Monson. I don't even know what that means. And look at this purple zone. You know what that means? I have no idea, but we'll come down here and check out the graph. Holy sh dense fog advisory. You're fluxed. Click on your county. Let's see how it happens. I just clicked on a random spot in Alabama. Probably where <coughs> Green's Greg lives. Greg's Worm Farm. National Weather Service forecast office for Jackson, Mississippi. Says widespread dense fog possible late tonight into your Sunday morning. Smoke them if you got them. Elevated threat areas of dense fog with visibilities of a quarter mile or less are likely timing now through tomorrow. Yazoo City, Philadelphia, not PA. Meridian, Jackson, Vicksburg, Hamburg, Greenville, Greenwood, Euphora. Columbus, Laurel, McGee, Brookhaven, Natchez, Winsboro. Heads up! It's going to be foggy. That means it'll be schmoggy. Cold snap, UK weather. Snow forecast to blanket parts of Britain as minus 10 C polar vortex sparks mayhem. National Hurricane Service warning. Met office weather forecast also show yellow weather warning for 70 mile per hour winds on Monday and Tuesday. Yeah, that's your lose day. Snow is set to fall in the UK as heavy winds could bring minus 10 C chill with medics warning a polar vortex could trigger NHS mayhem. Temperatures already dropped to minus 6.3 C in Balmoral, Aberdeenshire overnight and a cold snap will continue over the weekend, freezing the asses of these deer. Stags and Loch Molech in Aberdeenshire with temperatures of minus 6.3 C. If I keep talking this fast, you'll totally believe everything I'm saying. Meteorologist Simon Potter told the Sun office online the temperatures could be feeling closer to minus 10 C because the wind chill effect could affect the temperatures and chill them even further on your thermometers and they won't actually see that low but you'll actually feel that low. London freezing her ass off, Southampton, Cardiff, Birmingham, Manchester, Newcastle, Edinburgh, Aberdeen, Inverness, Wick, Belfast, Dublin, Cork, you're all fluxed. Yes, you better dress like this hot chick because she has that new scarf on. And if you live in a houseboat, you're flux and you're burning shit like garbage and other crap. And you're pooping out and it's all frozen here in Bath. And you're about to suck it. We'll get to it. Britain's beasting Scotland weather. Britain to be hit with freezing radiation fog tonight as Fukushima lands right on the UK. Minus 10 C Icelandic blast before Fukushima snow forecast next week. And that is a boom of nonsense. I have no idea what that <laughs> what I just said. I apologize. Perth just recorded its coldest January night in 18 years. Isn't it summer there? What the? 
is going on. That's Perth, right? <clears throat> Despite Perth being at the height of summer, the temperatures of the metro area dipped to 10 C at 5.42 a.m. Thursday, January 3rd. A apparently, blowing the minds of the entire Bureau of Meteorology in Western Australia. Who has been claiming that Western Australia has been burning up. Now, if we come over to latest Greenland ice sheet totals over here, you'll see that there's record almost six gigatons of ice building on Iceland, which is now an ice field based on the data. Holy shit. Why is it sn snowing in the Sahara? Because it's been snowing in the Sahara for three years, you pricks. Because the planet is cooling since February 2016. <laughs> oh my God. Did, did they just get here? Let me click these tabs. <clears throat> We're about to go crazy bill's blog about weather cycles and balance this is coming from lex 18 storm tracker blog so for those of you that message me every day underneath the video and ask me why it's so hot in your city please read bill's blog about weather cycles and balance if you don't have time to read it and you have time to message me, then you can suck it. But weather and climate are different, but they're similar. Climate represents a larger scale. Weather happens now, present. But weather and climate act similarly in the fact that they equilibrate, which is a big word, I know. Google it. The system, our atmosphere, is a small containment unit, a thin film around this globe. The blue marble you live on has barely an envelope of atmosphere. Maybe 10 miles high, that's about it. And if it weren't for that thin film of outgassing from oceans and crust and continents and plants, we'd be dead. It's the respiration zone where oxygen and carbon dioxide are created, plant food and human food. It's why we have biological entities on Earth. Now this tiny envelope... If it's cold in one area, it has to be warm in another. It can't unequilibrate ever. And this is based on thermodynamic principles. So if it's minus 30 and freezing cold up in the west coast of Canada, somewhere else it has to be much warmer. Because it all equals zero in the end of the equation based on thermodynamics and the heat budget of the planet. So budget your heat because it's going to be limited moving forward. Heads up. I see a downward trend. <laughs> so if you have any questions, don't leave them below. Antarctic sea ice is in record low territory again and nobody knows why. According to Maddie Stone who didn't do any research at all except tell you that it's the all of Antarctica is melting look at it, it's red you're all dead well what I didn't pull up was the fact that scientists have discovered thousands of new volcanoes erupting under Antarctica and melting the ice from underneath it has nothing to do with global warming man it has everything to do with climate change because climate change is based on the output of cosmogenic sources like the sun in our universe. 
<laughs> so the Earth's magnetosphere is flipping. The sun is shutting down. All these things are happening at the same time, and it's about to hit the fan. But in 2014, Antarctic sea ice was at an all-time record. The highest it's ever been recorded. Those are the facts. And then all these articles that say Antarctic is reaching an all-time low. This is 2017. Here it is, an all-time low down here. It's in multi-decadal averages. They're just fear mongers that are fiddling with data to freak you out. In fact, in the last 40 years, Antarctica, over those four decades, has had more ice than ever before for hundreds of years prior. It's at the highest ice amount ever. And if you didn't know, 90% of all global ice is in Antarctica. And they're, they're trying to pull a Shardica. Lowest ever, which is the highest it's ever been. <laughs> so even down here, it's the highest it's ever been in 4,000 years. Yeah. They just manipulate the data and they give you a small data set and they say it's the lowest it's ever been, except it's the highest it's ever been in human history. <laughs> in frauds. In human history, Antarctica was ice free. We have a map. In case you didn't know, here we are over, over at the National Sea and Ice Data Center where we can see ice is exactly on the 30 year normal everywhere except in this one spot. And you can see since 2015, Antarctic ice has been rising. <laughs> Antarctic rice has been rising. And then they have these graphs. This is the Antarctic sea ice extent. Oh my God, we're all dead. Look at this. It's terminal. Terminal velocity. Which is the hypocrisy. Because I'm going to come over here to the National Snow and Ice Data Center and bring you right down to the data of total Antarctic sea ice extent. Wait till you see this. Now that article that I just showed you, which is a article, just came out the other day. And this is the data set since 1978. And this is this year. Antarctic sea ice extent was at the highest ever recorded. And you can see an upward trend. I'm just drawing the line down. But it's barely an upward trend. It goes from 19 million square kilometers to 20 this year. But it's not losing ice at all. The extent. It's melting from below. And that's why they're lying to you. On every front. On the Arctic front. The Antarctic front. The human cause pay your taxes, you bitch, front. It's all bullshit. Climate warning experts find unexpected results. This is coming out today from physics.org. Now, <laughs> wait till you see this. This is now hitting the mainstream. The lamestream. My apologies. The IPCC and other global warming alarmists have been saying that tropical forests store one-third of Earth's carbon and two-thirds of its above-ground biomass. Now, most climate change models predict that as the world warms, all of the biomass will decompose more quickly because we're all burning up, which would send even more carbon dioxide into the atmosphere, which would make us burn up even faster. But new research presented at the American Geophysical Union's 2018 fall meeting contradicts that theory completely. <laughs> and the rate of decomposition is actually decreasing more carbon is being stored and the ruse is being unveiled <laughs> seismic update the ring of fire has been exploding for the last 24 hours boom 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 we started with a major uptick at Tanaga Volcano, where a 6.6 .6 just months ago banged off and there were tsunami warnings. Now we had a 6.1 today. Hey, hey. 
I wonder if Tanaga will blow soon. Hmm, I wonder. No tsunami warnings coming from Tanaga. The most recent quake of note, also in Alaska, a major 5.0 in Tanana. Tanaka and Tanana. Call your mama. Earlier today, we had a 6.8 in Brazil. Thankfully, at a very deep depth, 575.3 kilometers. No loss of life that I've heard about. 5.1 in Tonga. 5.4 in Indonesia. 57 kilometers north of Lakwai. And we had a major rumbler, 5.8 over in Japan. We have more activity up here in Iran. And just after the major earthquake in the Aleutians occurred, we had Uganda in the East African Rift Zone kicking off a 4.7. So seismically, the Earth is acting odd quickly. We're watching it. Crustal slip much. Worldwide volcano news update. Shivalush continues to erupt. We showed you the footage last night live. Reventador, Stromboli, Sanguito, Fuego, Popo, Krakatoa, Merapi, Shevalush, Ducono, Plancho, Petaroa. Whew. Oh, Noah. California's flu season death toll tops 40. Hey, Shorty, did you get your flu shot? Did you know 20% of people who get them die? <laughs> I'm just kidding. Only 20% of the dead people from the flu had the flu shot. That's what I really meant. Oh, shit. What did we just do? <coughs> Let's do this. I have to... Un Bear with me. We're booming with knowledge. The Little Ice Age hundreds of years ago still cooling the bottom of the Pacific. Researchers find. That's funny. That's the lag time that the global warmness failed to realize before their very eyes that CO2 follows temperature, sometimes with a lag time of 400 years, but so does the cooling of the oceans because the oceans are recycling themselves in a conveyor belt, so to speak, where the warm water dives down into the colder bottom through an upwelling as much of the ocean responds to the rising temperatures of today's world, the deep dark waters at the bottom of the Pacific appear to be doing the exact opposite. And they're cooling. And this is due to a new paper, which is not a schmaper, but is based on historical information and facts about the deep Pacific cooling. We'll leave you links to it. There are some amazing graphs where you can totally smoke tons of pot and just stare at them. And I'm going to show you how to use them. You go down here and you just move right. It's amazing. L Whoa! Number two of four. And watch. If you move the cursor around, it gives you info that comes up. It'll totally trip you out. Look at that. It almost looks like a video game. Holy sh... Am I playing a game? I hope not. Can we even do this? Yes. Let's try it. Boom! <clears throat> so here it is. Here's the data, which is um, a pretty amazing. Um, here we have the global temperature dropping down during the Maunder into the Dalton minimum and staying cold until 1850 where it has a really deep Dalton drop rises up to the centennial minimum where it holds true and according to this model keeps going up and up until today hey hey so the coldest time point is right here at the flexure but what you're now looking at is the Atlantic temperature as you go down. And because of these 
currents that recycle the water. It takes hundreds of years to take that cold water down. So the cold water at the surface was made here and it's been pushed down. So as you travel towards now, the water at depth is freezing and the water up top is warm. Here's all your cold. Regardless of what you're told, it's right down there. It's pretty amazing. And there's even a, a more amazing graph. Right here. Let's do it. So, <clears throat> this is what the global warming alarmists have been projecting, but this is the reality of the temperature from 2000 and lower. It's been dropping. And here's the new current agreement of the temperature also from 2000 and deeper in the Pacific. It's dropping. It's none of this garbage. So from the first 700 feet of the Pacific is warming. But the majority of the water in the ocean is cooling. The majority of the Pacific is cooling before your very lives, even though the top surface is warming. Here we are from 700 to 2000. Barely warming. The majority of the water is cooling in the Pacific. Heads up. The fear mongers have been fearing you out of existence. Now the major driver of climate on the earth is the sun. It provides all of the light for photosynthesis, which moves the water cycle, the carbon dioxide cycle. It provides all of the solar insulation that keeps us alive and warm in our Goldilocks zone. Without it, we'd be dead. If it changed in intensity just 10%, we would all freeze to death. So yes, the sun plays a vital role in climate change. Because everyone on this channel believes in climate change. Just not the definition of the IPCC and all the tool bags that can suck it. Brent Walker explained almost a decade ago how solar activities can affect the risks associated with climate change. Because Brent Walker a decade ago thought when they changed it to climate change, they meant warmer or colder. But they didn't, Brent, unfortunately. And you got <laughs> scammed. But he did come out with this amazing document, the new grand minima, <coughs> for an actuary summit back in Sydney, Australia. Totally. May 2013. New skills have been developed by actuaries if they are to understand the changes and risks that are occurring in the new grand minima. I've shared this about a year ago, but I think it's important for our new 20,000 subscribers to know about it. The insurance industry knew about the Eddy minima in 2013. That's six years ago. Have you been duped? I think so. Come check out his document. It is amazing. It has historical information on what happened in the last grand minima and what you need to know to survive and thrive in the future before the magnetic reversal, <laughs> which we will talk about. <clears throat> but that is decades off. In the next two decades, you have to worry about food shortages, famine, global unrest, inflation, you being priced out of everything. Your 401k going to sh Yes. You, you should start preparing now to be self-resilient, self-reliant, self-sufficient. Without the need for the man. 
If you're on multiple pharmaceuticals, you need to find homeopathic ways to get off, natural ways. And you need to do it now before it's too late. If the grid goes down in a year and pharmacies won't be open for three years, you may be fluxed. As John Allen Jack Eddy, an astronomer, said, <clears throat> the sun is neither constant nor entirely beneficent. <clears throat> As a variable magnetic star, now we're just talking about this micronova effect, it is ever-changing in many ways, including micronova. But the fluctuation in the Gleisberg cycle, the solar cycle, the cycle of the Grand Minima, we know about now. And the sun is ever-changing in many ways, often through violent explosions and eruptions of colossal scale. Based on historical documentation of the last 300 years, there are X-flares every year. <coughs> and if we go into a magnetic reversal phase where the magnetosphere has waned 20% more than it is now, well, the grid will fry. It will. So not only climate is constantly changing, but so are your very lives. Thousands rally against Hungary's slave law. More slave laws coming soon to a country near you, Prime Minister Orban. Now protesters in Budapest demand Prime Minister Viktor Orban abolish controversial labor, law, labor laws and new administrative courts. You know how your minimum wage has been raising? Yeah, it's been going up, but it hasn't gone up for 30 years. This is just a ploy to make you comply. $15, $20 an hour. It doesn't matter. You're still a fucking slave. Duh. I got 15 an hour to be a slave. Did you know I just got a raise? They gave me a dollar extra an hour to not see my family. Meteor or space junk lights up North Island skies. I think it was a piece of space junk re-entering, to be quite honest. This shooting light is nothing of note. So we're done talking about it. But we're going to talk about magnetic reversals and micronova. But before we talk about that, let's talk about Doug Vogt, who's become one of my heroes in this entire movement. This guy's been around for decades. He's a little tough for some of you to listen to, but I need you to realize that each and every one of us are different. We all have our own life experiences. Some of us are more politically correct than others. Some of us have, have better vocabularies. Some of us have more money or less money. Some of us are smarter or dumber. Some of us are clairvoyant or, or not. Some of us are sensitive or autistic. We're all unique. But we all have gifts. And what Doug is talking about in this video, which when I shared it a week ago had 5,000 views, now has 46,000 views a week ago. Oh, what a difference a week makes. Eyes wide open. And what he talks about at 35 minutes in this video is the fact that the CIA, which started as the Central Intelligence Group, whose first member was Charles Hapgood, Magnetic reversals and the Adam and Eve story and Chan Thomas all at the same time They took over control of the newly formed National Science Foundation Which has been driving the narrative of science discovery For my entire life and why I am no longer in academia because I could smell the poo-poo in the air The Central Intelligence Group can have access to scientific research activities of importance for foreign intelligence 
and will provide a means for presenting requests to private organizations to undertake research in scientific fields, including the social scientists, undoubtedly. The proposed National Science Foundation will provide a focal center where the Central Intelligence Agency will control the narrative. This is in 1947. This guy's a genius, and he goes out on a limb, and he puts himself out there. He deserves a thumbs up. And he will be, we will be interviewing Doug in multiple podcasts moving forward, and hopefully we can get him at LeeCon. But the most important thing you can do is share his information and be open-minded. He's been doing this since the 70s. Now, a couple people have commented that all novas are supernovas. And I just want to say that if you want to argue semantics about the word, it's a definition. But a supernova is when a star explodes, in my definition. What's what I learned? Recurrent nova is what we're talking about here, micronova. It's when a star does not explode, but it has a solar outburst. And not just a CME, this is a three-dimensional spherical outburst in all directions, a recurrent nova. And they are thought to arise in the same way as classic nova or supernova. So they're a different kind. The recurrent nova does not blow up the star. The star is still there through a white dwarf in a close binary system. And now we know in the last few decades that almost all stars, probably all stars, are binary or trinary. Or they're counter-rotating with other objects. It's not the way you were taught. These stars aren't alone and there's planets that all formed billions of years ago. It's a dynamic universe. We're moving through it at hundreds of thousands of miles an hour. Oumuamua should raise an eyebrow. So these recurrent nova are known. And it's what we call variable stars. Recurrent nova eruptions are often observed very intensely in a wide range of wa ra wavelengths from radio to optical to x-ray. And in this abstract... The author presents selected highlights from recent multi-wavelength observations. And we shared some of them in the Micronova video that we aired last night. So go check it out. We'll link it below. <clears throat> and it links Micronovas to ancient man and petroglyphs. Because I believe that the unexplained petroglyphs that we now know because of the work of the Electric Universe, Thunderbolts.info, Dave Talbot and Anthony Peratt, his work at Los Alamos, we have proven that the Peratt instability is the stick man. That the mother of all animals, according to archaeology, is actually a plasma discharge. And many other geologists like me are stepping forward and putting their careers on the line. I have no career on the line, by the way. <laughs> but Robert Schock, especially. A decade ago, he came out and eight years ago said the Sphinx was over 8,000 years old. And now he's over 10,000 years old. And we all know it's over 12,900 years old. We know it. It was built by the civilization that is now missing because of the last catastrophe that happened at 12,009, eliminating 65% of all megafauna worldwide, including mammoths, saber-toothed tigers, cave bears, giant sloth, and other insane things that would eat your ass right now. And they wouldn't knock on your door. They would rip the wall down. <laughs> Trust me, evolution has a purpose. And alchemy was not about turning anything into gold, you frauds. That's disinformation. It was the mastery of turning light into matter. 
Yuri Geller much. Permaculture Institute. If you want solutions, buy the Forest Garden Greenhouse by Jerome Ozentowski. I was gifted this years ago. This book can change your life. Do your own experimentation. But with just a little bit of thought and permaculture principles, you can do it wherever you are. It doesn't matter where you live. You don't have to go anywhere. Start growing your own food now. Use the power of the sun to heat your greenhouse. There are many, many ways to do it. Thermal mass is the easiest. If you can add 1,000, 2,000, 3,000 gallons of water in your greenhouse, you will grow food year-round in the Arctic Circle. This Permaculture Institute is at almost 9,000 feet. And, and those are grapevines. Proper prior planning prevents piss poor performance. You've only touched the surface. You have a long way to go. Together, combined knowledge is power. Find like-minded people. Make a community. Reach out. If you can't do that, find a bug out plan and get to one. The next few years will be catastrophic socioeconomically. It's going to be gradual, so you'll be able to watch it before your very lives. If you're not preparing now, you're going to be priced out. And then you're going to feel stupid. We don't want you to be stupid or feel stupid. That's why we have the channel. We love you. Be safe.